Hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? All right. We're back at this um, stories of Yahshua in India. This is the same chapter from the last two videos I put up, chapter 28 in the New Testament of the Nazarene Bible of the Essene Way. Now, I want to read this one to you guys. This is the story of the pilgrimage to the sacred river. And after I read it, I remembered a story that I heard in the Hindu. It's in the Bhagavad Gita. But all I could find online was that they say it's in the Mahabharata. So I'm still not too um, familiar with those works and what they are. But I did hear this story. I read it. I, I have a Bhagavad Gita and I try to read it. It has the Sanskrit. So it's busy. The page is busy. But... <clears throat> this is the story that's there about these um, five Pandava brothers. Arjuna is one of them. If you watched the video before this one and the other one, Yeshua was talking about, he appeared as Krishna and was speaking to Arjuna about this battle here and how it's really good. So you might want to watch that first video about Yeshua in India. He explains that. So, so then this picks up after the battle. <clears throat> and it says they ruled the kingdom for 36 years. And they decided to relinquish their kingdom and go on their last journey. So these five brothers and their wife, Dharapati, they left for the Himalayas. And they were followed by a dog, right? So the story goes on. I was trying to find the original one and I couldn't. So it's just these, these recounts of the story. But... um. Um, so they started walking, and then they all died. The only two that were left were this brother, Euhistria, and the dog, and um, the other Pandavas, along with Dharapati, had died on their journey across the Himalayas. But the dog accompanied him throughout. Finally, Euhistria reached the gates of heaven. There, Indra appeared with a chariot, and Euhistria mounted it. The dog was about to jump in, but Indra got angry and declared that there was no place in heaven for a dog. Hearing this, Euhistria calmly got off the chariot and announced that he would not go to heaven unless the faithful dog was allowed to come along with him. And then suddenly the dog was transformed into Dharma Raja. And then he praised Yuhistria for his wisdom and blessed him. Then Yuhistria went to heaven. So that's a whole story with the moral that, you know, like we got to love even the animals equal. And if the animals can't go where we're going, then we may not want to go there because all creatures are created equal. Now I'm going to let you hear the story out of the Megillah because it's just like that. And, um... It's about a dog, and then I'm going to take you to the King James. So try to stick to the end, because Yeshua was saying the same thing about the sheeps. Um, here we go. Yeshua sat on a log beside a road outside of Benares. Two Hindu pilgrims taking a rest from their walk sat beside him to eat their lunch. The two men on a holy pilgrimage to a sacred river held in high esteem by their sect. As they chatted with Yeshua, the two complained bitterly about a third companion who had abandoned the walk. Oh, the three had agreed to walk the long distance from their village to the sacred river to perform a purification ritual. After two days of the seven-day walk to the river, the three pilgrims had come across a sick man. The sick man had collapsed by the side of the road and had a fever. One of the three pilgrims had given up the pilgrimage to the sacred river in order to care for the sick stranger. Now the two pilgrims who had continued the journey sat beside Yeshua complaining of the bad behavior of their former companion. One of the two said, the two of us will be rewarded by God for keeping our vow. Our former companion will be punished by God. The other of the two added, truly, God hates a vow breaker. And behold, Krishna Das, the founder of our sect two centuries ago, established this purification ritual. <clears throat> okay, so they've been keeping this ritual for 200 years. And you heard what they said. Yeshua told the two pilgrims the following story. He said, once upon a time, a saint the founder of your sect was on his way to perform this very same purification ritual. But on his journey to the river, he came upon an injured dog. 
though the dog had deep wounds and Krishna Das had not enough water to properly wash and purify the wounds, he knew that if he did not cleanse the festering wounds, the dog would die. Already an infection had set in. And so he carried the dog to the nearest watering hole, a well that the saint had passed along the way. Having carried the dog back to the path to the well, back down the path to the well, behold, Krishna Das discovered that the rope <clears throat> and bucket had been stolen. Krishna Das took his turban, a turban like the two of you now wear in his honor, and unraveled it. He uh, wound the turban cloth into a rope. Then he made a basket from twigs, reeds, and large leaves. He attached his rope to the basket and holding one end of the rope, dropped the basket into the well. It had been a good idea, but behold, the rope was not long enough to reach the water. Krishna Das, knowing the great need of the dog, did not give up. He stripped off his white robe, a robe like the two of you now wear in his honor, twisted it and added it to the length of his rope. But even then, the rope was not quite long enough to reach the water. And so he took his last possession, his prayer beads, and added them to the rope. Success. At last, the rope was long enough to reach the water. Krishna Das used the water to cleanse the wounds of the dog, but he was still concerned about infection and thus resolved to find some healing herbs with which to dress the wound, knowing that it would cause him to miss the appointed time to perform the river ritual, for this ritual was to be performed on a particular day. He carried the dog many miles back down the road, for lo, he remembered seeing a patch of the healing herbs growing there. He treated the wound of the dog with the herb, then, behold, Krishna Das stayed three days to nurse the dog through the healing crisis. By then, he knew he had missed the purification ritual at the sacred river. By the fourth day, the dog was much better. That night, Krishna Das had a true dream, a vision of the living God. God told him, Krishna Das, better than a thousand pilgrims to sacred rivers is a single act of kindness. Then, behold, the Lord Krishna, the God who Krishna Das served, baptized him in the river of light all right so that was nice right and so he he the vision said that you know all of that is better for one single act of kindness than for us to be keeping with these uh rituals and purification rituals and all of that and all that because those other guys said he was going to die so okay that's what I'm getting from the whole story, even the other story, right? Now, look at Matthew. I went to Matthew 12 and 11 because I had remembered that they had said something to him about the Sabbath, right? <clears throat> so here, I'm just read this and we'll be done. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. For behold, there was a man which had his hand withered, and they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath day, will ye not lay hold on it and lift it out? And then he says, How much then is a man better than a sheep? See that question right there? Is man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then said he to the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he stretched forth his hand, and it was restored like as the other. Then they went out. The Pharisees went out and held counsel against him that they might destroy him. Yeah, because you see, that was what everybody got to do. You got to go back and you got to really look at his words and what you know, what Christ was saying in the King James Bible and anywhere you could find the words of Christ. Go and read them and you'll see that what he was telling and what the problem that they had with him. It wasn't because he was saying, I'm the king of the Jews and I'm going to rule all of y'all and all that. No, he was just telling us about the real universal law and how life and how we treat each other, animals included, is is whether or not we are going to um, ex grow from this stage of, of of human being that we're in right now. All right, guys, <clears throat> I'm not going to talk too much, but yeah, that's something else, right? That even on the Sabbath. So when we got all these. And there's another place where they were asking him, like, why don't your disciples wash their hands? And he said, you you make null and void 
Um, let me see. Maybe I could find it. I wasn't supposed to make this that long. Let's say wash. No, I'm not even going to do it. I'll put it on another video. Guys, thanks for watching. All right. Stay tuned.